The Lord be with you. And And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory Glory to you, O Lord. Lord. That very day, the first day of the week, two of Jesus' disciples were going to a village seven miles from Jerusalem called Emmaus. And they were conversing about all the things that had occurred. And it happened that while they were conversing and debating, Jesus himself drew near and walked with them. But their eyes were prevented from recognizing him. He asked them, What are you discussing as you walk along? They stopped looking downcast. One of them, named Cleophas, said to him in reply, Are you the only visitor to Jerusalem who does not know of the things that have taken place there in these days? And he replied to them, What sort of thing? They said to him, The things that happened to Jesus the Nazarene, who was a prophet mighty in deed and word before God and all the people. How our chief priests and rulers both handed him over to a sentence of death and crucified him. But we were hoping that he would be the one to redeem Israel. And besides all this, it is now the third day since this took place. Some women from our group, however, have astounded us. They were at the tomb early in the morning. It did not find his body. They came back and reported that they had indeed seen a vision of angels who announced that he was alive. Then some of those with us went to the tomb and found things just as the women had described. But him they did not see. And he said to them, Oh, how foolish you are! How slow of heart to believe all that the prophets spoke! Was it not necessary that the Christ should suffer these things and enter into his glory? Then he began, then beginning with Moses and all the prophets, he interpreted to them what referred to him in all the scriptures. As they approached the village to which they were going, he gave the impression that he was going on farther. But they urged him, Stay with us, for it is nearly evening, and the day is almost over. So he went in to stay with them. And it happened that while he was with them at table, he took bread, said the blessing, broke it, and gave it to them. With that, their eyes were opened, and they recognized him. But he vanished from their sight. Then they said to each other, Were not our hearts burning within us while he spoke to us on the way and opened the scriptures to us? So they set out at once and returned to Jerusalem, where they found gathered together the eleven and those with them, who were saying, The Lord has truly been raised and has appeared to Simon. Then the two recounted what had taken place on the way and how he was made known to them in the breaking of the bread. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. In Emmaus' seven-mile journey, I recently had my own little Emmaus journey this past week working from home on Thursday, which was a rainy day here. My wife called me around noon and asked if I could bring her lunch. She had forgotten it that morning. So I told her, sure. I packed her lunch and I thought, this weekend's the Emmaus, I could walk. It's actually seven miles to where she's at and back, but it was rainy, so I jumped in my car. It would take two hours for me to walk besides. I got in my car and I drove there, walked in, gave her her lunch, things were great. I come out the the door of the cleaners where she works and my tire is flat. And I thought, you've got to be kidding me. A little frustrated, right? And then I heard this little voice in the back of my head. 
Count your blessings. Yes, God, I know, I know. I'll count my blessings. I've changed many tires in my life. So the rain picked up, and I thought, seriously, and then that voice, count your blessings. So I pulled my car up under the awning, which is nice. I got out of the rain, continued, got the lug wrench. I could not get the lugs off the tire. They felt like they had to be at 150 torque pounds or something. Getting frustrated, that voice again, count your blessings. And I realized, yes, you're right, I'm, here I am. I used to work at this place. They have plenty of pipes, so I go in, grab a piece of pipe, give me some leverage, and I get the lug nuts loosened up. All the lug nuts are off. Can't get the tire off. Again, that voice. <laughs> Count your blessings. I can't get the tire off. It's seized to the drum. So I pull my phone out as I'm counting my blessings and look up on YouTube how to unseize a tire. Sure enough, I find a mechanic that gives me some tips because I never had to deal with that one before. And I was able to do it in a safe way. My mini Emmaus journey. To me, an Emmaus journey is those times in life that we have, that we encounter, where they're challenging or not, but we walk those times knowing God is with us, perhaps talking to God along the way. And we invite him in that conversation, which is talking to God through prayer. It could be a peaceful and serene time challenge. It could be a very stressful and anxious time. But still, we're walking it with Christ by our side. You know, 2,000 years ago, roughly, two disciples journeyed and were struggling with their faith. Some scholars, scripture scholars, say that they had lost, those two had lost their faith at that time. Cleophas and another. Very disheartened. Jesus appears to them, comes to their aid. The risen Christ preaches the very first Easter sermon as he opens their minds to the scripture, which they know very well, the scripture that points to Christ. And then, breaking bread with them, their eyes are opened. Their journey with Christ by their side. It's fair to say that many of us are on an Emmaus journey right now challenged with our circumstances. Some, I've heard some say, I know many are saying, where is God in all of this? It's easy to lose heart. These Emmaus journeys, these challenges that occurred 2,000 years and ever since, it's easy to fall into that trap of just complaining. Like when your lug nuts are stuck on a wheel. To question what has occurred or to second-guess others what their motives are. Why are you dealing with this? Why did they do that? Or wishing it was the future or wishing it was the past. If we could only go back to 2019, it was only a few months ago, I can remember vividly many people couldn't wait to kick 2019 out the door. It was a rough year, especially here in Dayton. And it's so easy during those times to focus on the darkness and not on the light. Yes, we are living in very challenging times, traveling our own Emmaus journeys, especially challenging for the overworked, those people who are on the front lines, caring for others, taking their chances through their work, especially challenging for the sick and the dying who many times may find themselves alone by themselves or only with their caregivers, and challenging for those who have lost loved ones as they mourn without their entire family and friends beside them, and the unemployed. What about the retired at home looking at four walls day after day? You know, the staff and I are blessed 
Thanks to you who are able to continue to support us, we continue to minister here at the parish. All of our Emmaus paths are so different, but we are all on one, whether we want to be or not, and none of us are alone. You know, two things stood out to me as I was reflecting on this gospel. Two things about these disciples. The first is, did you know that if you go to Israel, you may be a bit surprised to find that there are, my understanding, up to six sites identified as a man. And did you know that the second disciple walking, the one walking with Cleophas, they are unnamed. It is not known who they are. Frankly, we do not know 100% whether they're male or female. Today, this week, I suggest that you occupy those two mysteries. You are the second disciple. And the location of Emmaus and that journey is your journey that you're going through. If you find yourself isolated, stuck day after day, in the same place, looking at four walls, or maybe a few more than four. Routine is the answer, that's the challenge. This can be looked at as a precious opportunity to focus on God, whether you're alone or with your family. A monastic priest that I was watching on YouTube the other day was sharing, and I thought to myself, and he admitted, this isn't the most challenging time for him. He lives a monastic life. But what he shared was inspiring because the first thing he said in Faro's routine is, take off your pajamas and put your clothes on when you get up. Establish a daily routine which includes exercising your mind, your body, and your spirit. Write down in your calendar or wherever you need to, time when you will pray. Don't overcomplicate it. Take time every day to be the light of Christ to someone else, whether through a phone call or an email. Take time to really look at the amount of time you spend on social media. Limit yourself and find God in the quiet time. Sometimes quiet is hard for people to deal with. So maybe if that's you, use a mantra. Lord God, enter my heart. Lord God, enter my heart. Lord God, enter my heart. Whatever mantra you need to fill your mind with. But what about those who are just overworked, exhausted, tired? Connect, talk to God throughout your day. Wear a crucifix. Put one in your pocket. Put a rosary in your pocket. A sacramental in your pocket. And grasp it when you need to throughout your day. And silently just ask God for help to guide you. Christ is walking with you. Don't overcomplicate it. And also find time where God is, which is in the quiet. As all of our journeys continue, know that Christ who walked this earth journeys beside you as a community we all journey with one another through prayer. Father Brian and I are a phone call away if you need that, or an email can be sent to us. We are here for you, you are not alone. There is relief in sight. Christ loves each and every one of you so much. My fellow disciples, will you strive to embrace your Emmaus journey?